Hello everyone and welcome back to me Shiva Wilson and my channel which is all about legalizing recreational flower in the UK. Here today I've got um, some stuff about Tantra, Buddhist Tantric practices and how they relate to flower. Um, so I'm going to give you a bit of information all about Buddhist Tantric practices involving flower. So Buddhist Tantric practices, particularly in Vajrayana Buddhism, often incorporate various rituals and substances as a means to aid meditation and spiritual growth. The Buddha has come back. Flower has historically been used in some tantric and shamanic traditions, including certain Buddhist sects, sects <laughs> for its psychoactive properties, which are believed to assist in reaching altered states of consciousness conducive to meditation and insight. What do you think of that, Buddha? Yep. Yeah. The Buddha appears to agree. Yes, this is the case. In these practices, flower might be used ceremonially to enhance focus, deepen meditation and facilitate a sense of spiritual connection. It's important to note, however, that the use of flower in religious practices is not universal across all Buddhist traditions and is often context specific, appearing more frequently in specific forms of Vajrayana or Tibetan Buddhism. It's also worth mentioning that such practices are traditionally conducted under the guidance of a knowledgeable teacher or lama to ensure that they are performed safely and effectively within the context of spiritual development. Yep, the Buddha agrees. In traditions where flower has historically been used in tantric or spiritual practices, it is typically consumed in a ritualistic context to support meditation and spiritual exploration. Here's a broad idea of how such a practice might look, drawing from historical accounts and analogous practices. 1. Preparation The practitioner would begin by preparing the meditation space, often with rituals of purification, setting up altars or arranging sacred objects and offerings. 2. Intention setting A clear intention would be set for the session. This could involve reciting specific prayers, mantras or visualizing deities central to the practice. The focus is often on seeking deeper understanding or attaining specific spiritual insights. Specific spiritual insights. Consumption number three. Flour might be consumed in a controlled manner, often in small amounts. Traditionally, this could be through smoking or ingesting using methods appropriate to the cultural context. Four, meditation and ritual. Following consumption, the practitioner would engage in meditation, focusing on mantras, visualizations, or deity practices central to their spiritual tradition. The altered state facilitated by flower is believed to help transcend ordinary perception, aiding in deeper meditation or spiritual communion. Five, integration. After the meditation session, time might be spent reflecting and integrating any insights gained into daily spiritual and ethical practices. It's crucial to understand that these practices are highly specialised and should not be undertaken lightly. Here are some important points to consider. Not all Buddhists use flower. The use of flower in Buddhist practices is not widespread or endorsed by all schools of Buddhism. It is often associated with specific tantric lineages and traditions where it is used within a highly controlled and realist ritualistic context. Intention and guidance are crucial. The use of substances in tantric practices is not about getting high or escaping reality. It's about accessing deeper levels of consciousness and using the altered state to facilitate spiritual growth and transformation. This requires careful preparation, proper guidance from an experienced teacher, and a strong intention to work with the energy of the substance in a positive and constructive way. Potential risks, risks and ethical considerations. Using any substance, including flour, can carry potential risks and should be approached with caution. It's important to be aware of potential side effects, legal restrictions, and the ethical implications of using substances in a spiritual context. If you're interested in learning more about Tantric Buddhism and its use of substances, it's vital to seek out reputable and qualified teachers who can provide accurate information and guidance. Remember, Exploring spiritual practices should be a journey of personal growth and understanding, guided by respect and responsibility. 
So there you go, a little bit about tantric practices using flour. What do you think, Buddha? Yes, very thorough, he says. Although you could actually demonstrate a meditation practice. Well, what? I'm not going to meditate on camera, am I? <laughs> he wants me to meditate on camera. Uh, how am I going to meditate on camera? Quick, shove the Buddha in there. No, there you go. Right, let's imagine I've just um, consumed some flour. Focus on mantras. Mm, mantra, 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 mantra. The highest form of mantra is the word mantra. Mantra, 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 mantra. Yeah, I feel spiritually enlightened. Thanks very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. I've been Shiva Wilson. We've been trying to legalise recreational flour in the UK. Good night.